can certainly do it uh, for you. George, Kathy, Adam, Scott uh, could do that. We are available weekdays, weeknights, weekends to help you guys structure and put these deals together. So uh, let us know what we can do to do that. I've been doing that for probably a solid four to five years as the appraisal floor um, and kind of setting a, a list price and having multiple offers push that above that list price has been very common in the Montclair and Glenridge uh, market for the last four or five years. And now it's becoming very common almost everywhere in, across the Northeast. So it's something that we're seeing quite a bit of. Um, and we're still able to do 25 and 30 day closings. So, um, you know, the buyer just needs to be ready to move, ready to move on title, ready to move quickly on the appraisal in order that appraisal is a rush. So whatever we can do to help. Um, we've been seeing that people that are putting in offers not contingent on the sale of their current home, if they can afford that. Gifts are kind of one way that they've been doing it. They've been saying to family members, hey, I'm gonna put my home on the market. Can you give me a 100,000 or $75,000 short-term gift um, to help us have the cash to put as a down payment or pulling from the 401k? That's been another common way that we've seen people are kind of pulling off the not contingent on the sale of the home type of offer in this very competitive environment. So whatever we can do to help, uh, please let us know. Looks like Chris is on and he is ready. So uh, so I will hand it off to you, sir. Thanks, Shane. All right. Um, and sorry for the little bit of a delay on there. I had a, a call that I uh, didn't realize was gonna go a little bit over today, but it's all good. Um, so yeah, basically if you got in that email, um, what I was going to be doing today is going over how you can move any of your currently active listings into uh, DocuSign from DotLoop. And the idea is that as we're starting to move more into DocuSign, you may already have listings that are still kind of being put through DotLoop because it's been started there. So the idea is that I'm going to show you how you can start kind of moving things out of DotLoop and then putting them into DocuSign. So I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen here. And I'm going to actually start from dot loop. And then we're going to be moving into command. And then we're going to be moving into DocuSign. So I'm actually going to sign into my dot loop account. And if you're not familiar with DocuSign, if you haven't dabbled with it just yet. The idea with DocuSign is that the rooms are going to act pretty much like your loops. So you have a loop here. You've been working with it in the past or you've been working with it currently, but you want to start trying to move things into DocuSign. So I'm actually going to just start. I'll create a fresh loop here and call this 123 Main Street in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I will put it in as a listing loop. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure the room is muted so we can hear me. Um, and then I'll hit done. And we're gonna jump into this loop. So this is our loop. And I'm gonna add a few documents in there. So I'm gonna use some of the templates. And we're gonna go ahead and switch it from residential here. I'll just select all these and we're going to pop them into the loop. So the, this is the loop and we have my documents here, of course. Now, as I'm starting to work with DocuSign, um, like I said, you may have already had things started in dot loop that you're currently working on. Perhaps you have things signed already. And what you're trying to do now is move things into DocuSign. So the idea is that I can have things signed in here and then move it over, but I would have to still download it. So the idea is that I can go and I can select the forms that I need to actually pull into a new room. And I'll show you how to do that. So in dot loop, you can essentially check off any of the documents that you want. And typically what I recommend with this too, because I can actually, we can do this and let's just select a few of these, right? So maybe I had these signed, or maybe I do have like a few of them that still need to be signed, right? So what I will do is I will select the documents that I need to pull in, and I'm gonna download these real quick. And I am recording this, so I will post this onto YouTube later. Um, but we're just gonna start, we're gonna take a handful of these. 
and I'm going to download that as a PDF. So I think some of the confusion around the dot loop DocuSign um, kind of switch over is that dot loop, dot loop isn't actually moving anything over for you. They just, they're not going to do that. Um, there's a couple ways you can move loops into a Google Drive, which I'll show at the end. Um, but the idea with any of the loops that you have that you currently have active that you want to be able to move into DocuSign, you do have to manually move the documents over, whether you download them or you start from DocuSign directly. Um, you would have to move those documents over manually. So the idea was that I actually downloaded a, uh, a PDF with multiple files, but what I'm going to be able to do is separate those within a room. So I have them downloaded. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go into my command. So we're going to log into command. And I'm going to switch it here to my personal. I'm going to go into my contacts. So uh, before I do that, actually, let's go into my settings. And through the settings here, I want to make sure that I firstly have my DocuSign account connected, in which case you'll see here that I do. But if you haven't already connected it, you definitely want to make sure that you had uh, connected it. And if you haven't, you'll need to create an account. So there will be a button here that says connect account, and it will give you an invitation link to sign up for DocuSign. And once you have that done, you'll be able to connect your uh, command opportunities with your DocuSign rooms. And that's how you're going to be able to sync documents back and forth between command and DocuSign. You'll notice that I did have dot loop here and dot loop did have some functionality with command for a little while. It's actually, it doesn't work the way that it did before. Uh, the idea would have been with uh, dot loop, I can actually pull the documents into command directly, but it doesn't work like that anymore. Um, it would let you create new loops. However, I wouldn't suggest that as we're moving into DocuSign. So I wouldn't say starting a loop in command is, uh, it's probably just gonna create more work for you later on. So what I'm doing from here, after I have my account connected within command, I actually want to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to go to my dashboard. And anytime that I do a DocuSign class, typically what I'll do is I will start with the contact first. And within command, you always want to make sure that you have the contact living in your database because that's what it's going to start with. So it starts with the contact, then I create the opportunity, which then I'll create a room with. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on my contact. Actually, let's pretend like we're creating a whole new one. So we're gonna go add contact, and then you would fill in the information here. So basically you're filling out this card, and then we're gonna create that new contact. And then we're gonna go ahead and say, Click on the name. We're going to go into the opportunities tab here. And then we're going to go to create opportunity. Now, because we had a loop created, maybe I want to have the loop or the, the name of the opportunity the same as the loop. So I have everything consistent. So what I'll do is I'll just go back into dot loop, make sure I have the, the loop name, which in this case was just one, two, three main street. So I can call it that. And that way, all my stuff will be consistent across the board. So I'm really just trying to make this as easy as possible for myself, because as I'm kind of jumping back and forth between dot loop, DocuSign, and command, I'm going to have things uh, as consistent as possible. In this case, it was a listing as well. So I'm going to keep the listing type or the opportunity type as listing. You also see here, if I had to, I can switch between buyer, landlord, and tenant. Um, this is going to be more important as you're working with the pipeline. So you want to make sure that the opportunity type is consistent with the type of transaction. So if is it a listing, is it a buyer, is it a landlord, or is it a tenant? Just make sure you're clicking the correct one. Then what's going to happen after I have this all kind of filled out, and we're going to just going to put in some of this information here as well, and we'll put it under active. We're going to go ahead and create that new opportunity. And if you're already familiar with the opportunity part of it, um, essentially what I just did was I created a new opportunity because I'm going to 
move into a DocuSign room in just a second. And I actually do wanna just edit this real quick too. I wanna make the name the same. There we go. Um, one other thing as well, you notice that I was able to actually edit the opportunity name. So for any reason that I wanna go back and edit this, you can do that here under the details. Okay, so we need to now get the documents put together. And the way that I can do that is I can go under documents. Now there's a couple of ways I can do this as well. Um, and I'm just gonna select the checklist type here. Now you did notice that when I downloaded the documents from dot loop, you can also add them into the checklist here. So if you already have them filled out and signed, you can just add them to the checklist here and then do submit to MC. And that way you can have them all kind of checked for compliance through command. Now let's say that I had moved some of the paperwork out, maybe it was partially signed or it's still awaiting signatures. Um, there's the other thing that I can do is basically create the room in DocuSign and then work with the signatures in there. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go where it says start a transaction and I'm gonna select DocuSign and that's gonna generate the room for me. And the room again is gonna be exactly the same name as the loop and it's also gonna be the same name as the opportunity. So I'm trying to make things as uh, consistent for me as possible. Now, because I downloaded a packet from inside of dot loop, I can actually upload that here as a packet, but I can also separate it. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that from within DocuSign as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the documents. And we have here a PDF and it says multiple documents right now, but I wanna split that up because I have many documents within that packet that I need to kind of have separated, right? So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm actually gonna go ahead, uh, I think my, sorry about that. I think my screen kind of bugged out there for a second. Let's go back. Um, so I'm gonna go back in here and you'll see that we have the multiple documents PDF and I'm gonna split that up. So I have it set up into multiple uh, documents. And in this case, it's actually six pages. So I'm gonna actually right click on this and you can use the split option to do this. And you notice that it's set up with six pages. So I'm actually gonna create here six documents. Now for document number one, I can see if I hover over this that it's a CIS form. So I'll just label that as such. Um, number two, this is gonna be my lead paint form. Uh, number three, this is gonna be a permission to advertise. And again, I'm just using this as an example. So that's number three. Oops, that's number two, I'm sorry. It's number three. This will be number four, and this will be my offer and acceptance. Number five is gonna be a lead paint form. We're just gonna leave that one. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and then say save. And you'll see what it did. It actually created, and I'll just delete this one out. I'll just delete that. Delete that, cool. So now I have the forms that I need to either have filled or are already signed inside of my DocuSign room. Now, in this case, the form is actually not filled out. So let's say I wanted to get this filled and signed. So the way that I can do that is we could, firstly, I like to go through the details here. And under the details, I can fill out some of the information about the property. You know, in this case, uh, these are just regular PDF forms. So I don't really have to worry about that right now. 
But under details, I can add the seller names. I can add my listing agent information there. And you're gonna see why in a, in a second why I was gonna do that, because basically here, those are gonna act like people that are inside of the room with me. Um, so I don't have to necessarily invite people in here to do anything, um, but if they're in the details, they will essentially be auto-populated into a, re a recipient list for me to pull from. So under documents, and I'm just gonna use, let's just use this uh, CIS as an example. And we're gonna create a new envelope for that. So the way that it works with DocuSign versus DotLoop, DocuSign uses something called envelopes. And that's how you're gonna send your documents out for somebody to be signed. So in this case, I chose the CIS, which is the first form I wanna have um, essentially filled out. And I'm gonna go ahead where it says add recipients and I'm gonna choose room participants. And in this case, I could choose here from the list the seller, I'll also add myself as the listing agent and I'll hit add selected. And I'm gonna also change this here um, because I wanna make it so you can see what it looks like. And we're gonna go ahead and just pop that up there, all good. All right, we can also write a message here and we can go ahead and hit next once we're done. All right, so we have a CIS form that has been uploaded as a PDF, and we need to now get some of these forms filled out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and choose the seller in this case, which is John Smith, and we're just gonna add some information there. You know, we can put here the uh, signature box, which will be here. Hey, Chris, th these don't auto-populate at all? They do. I'm just using the example if I'm pulling it in from dot loop first. Gotcha. And then I'll show you how you can pull it in as a template. So I'm just using the example right now. If I am pulling in forms from dot loop specifically, and I might have already had this signed perhaps, um, and I want to just pull it back into my DocuSign room for... Uh, maybe I needed to get an additional signature on it, or um, maybe I was working with some documents already, but I wanted to pull all of them in. So I'm just using this as an example. And then what I will do is I will add a checkbox here. Actually, we're going to do this one here. We're going to switch that to this. So this is switching it back to me. And we're going to add a checkbox here for that. I'll just double click on that. And then that's all good. And then all I would need to do from here is I would send that and that would send the document out to be signed. Now let's say I already had a whole bunch of documents that were signed within dot loop, but I want to pull in some templates now from DocuSign because I'm starting to migrate over. Um, you can easily do that from here as well. If you go to where it says add, you can go to where it says DocuSign forms. And under DocuSign forms, you can pull from the DocuSign forms group, which will be essentially labeled very similar to how it was in DotLoop. And let's say I had to pull from the listing residential packet. So I'll choose that one. And in this case, you'll see here, I can also pull in all the forms that were in dot loop and they are in DocuSign as templates as well. So that's CIS form as an example, let's pull it in. The CIS form that I pulled back in from the templates in here is gonna be fully editable. So basically how I would edit it in dot loop, it's gonna be very similar to that in here. And you'll see here that a lot of it's going to also autofill based on the information I filled out already. So in this case, like you'll notice that I don't have any of the signature boxes yet. So the way that I would add the signature boxes is through the envelope. So kind of like how I showed just a second ago, the envelope is going to act as the way for me to send these documents out. 
Um, you also notice the listing agreement in here as well. I do have that and I can edit this as well. And this is also templated here too. So any of those forms that I would be using in dot loop, you can also use in here and they're also templated. The only main difference that I was uh, mentioning is that a lot of these are going to be sent through an envelope in which case that's how it's going to be signed. So now if I chose the CIS as an example, and we go to where it says create envelope, you'll notice that I have a different option here where it says add recipients. It's going to say pre-tagged roles. And under pre-tagged roles, you can select either the buyer or seller in this case. And then I will hit add selected. And I can, again, I can change the names on here as well. So if I needed to change any of the names, in this case, it's pulling in the information from the opportunity. So it knows based on the opportunity, the seller is John Smith or whomever it winds up being. So if I hit it, if I hit the next button, you'll notice now that I don't have to populate the signature fields because they're already here. So the difference between what I was doing before, which was pulling in a PDF template, um, the PDF is gonna be essentially static. So this is knowing based on the pre-tag role that the seller or the buyer is the person who has to sign in this case. And then once I hit send, that's gonna send that document out for that person to sign. So the only other, the only thing that I did differently in this case was I used a template and I used the pre-tag roles. And that's what's actually auto-filling those spots for me at this point. Um, if you have been using DocuSign already, I've gotten questions around some stuff like the seller's disclosure. The seller's disclosure also uses pre-tag roles and the pre-tag roles will auto-fill for them to sign or fill certain spots on that form. Um, so, I mean, that's basically how I would be pulling in any of the documents that I had previously in dot loop. And then I want to start working with DocuSign. Um, was there any specific questions that you want me to go over in regards to how I'm moving things over specifically? Anybody in the room right now? Do we have to move everything over? I would say if you are already working with dot loop and you have, I would say it's probably more useful for anything that's currently active. I wouldn't go back to anything that's currently archived or closed. I just think it would be a lot of work for you to go through and have to move things over. Um, yeah, that would be too much. The one thing that I did mention in the beginning was that there is a tool that KW is providing. It's called API Nation and API Nation is something that you can use to help you move loops out of command or out of uh, dot loop into a Google drive. We're actually going to be doing this on a market center level. So we will be essentially moving all these loops out of dot loop into a Google drive. Um, however, you will have access to all those loops even after the uh, subscription ends. Um, the only thing is that you won't be able to create any new loops going forward. Um, so I think for uh, like the the actual things that you would have to be moving over. I would say if it's something that's active, um, that would probably be something that you'd want to move over um, if that was what you're going to be doing. So the idea of this whole like session was just to kind of go over like how I can kind of get things out of the loop and then into a room. Because I might have forms in here that were already signed, but I might have a few that haven't been signed yet. So I might be just kind of migrating over certain templates um, in which case in the DocuSign room, I can just kind of use the templates that are in there. Um, I did mention with command because we are going to moving, we're going to be moving compliance in here, um, which means that basically what I could do is if I already have the forms in here filled out or signed, I can easily download those and I can upload them into an opportunity as well. So like if I had, let's say a permission to advertise and I'll use that. Let's actually pull in a listing agreement here. 
So I'll download this. Let's say this was the filled out one and I wanted to upload it back into command. I can still do that. And I can just go to where it says add a file. I can actually just drag this in or find it on my computer. And then I can assign that to the particular checklist that I'm looking to work in. So one thing you'll notice with command specifically is that it works with these checklists and it's broken up into three different sections. So you have the listed, you have the under contract, and then you have the closed. And each one's going to have a different set of documents that may need to be uploaded. Some of them, again, are going to be conditional depending on the type of transaction. Um, but basically, we would be using this for compliance as we're kind of moving forward uh, to submit documents to the office. Because you'll notice within DocuSign, there isn't a button here for me to submit to MC um, or sub submit for review. So basically, I would be using command to do that. But the idea with DocuSign is that I can also get everything signed in here first. So I don't have to go back and forth looking for a broker signature. Um, I would just set it up under a pre tag role for that person to sign. So I'll show you that as well. So I'm going to just use the, the listing agreement again as an example. So I'm actually just going to select this. And I'm going to go where it says create envelope. And under the envelope here, where it says add recipients to envelope, I'm going to select pre tag roles again. And you're going to notice here that it has the sections already kind of selected for listing agent. And I'll select myself. We can select the broker. And then I will also select the seller. And this particular opportunity was created under the PASCAC Valley office. That's why I'm seeing their information. But if this was under the Fort Lee Market Center or Rutherford Market Center, you would have access to all those people in this list. So any of the leadership for that office would appear in this list. So again, the, the nice thing about that is that every room that you're creating, the people that have to be signing things for you, like whether it be the listing broker or the agent or the seller, they'll already be populated into that uh, list here. So it's not like I have to go and invite everybody in, kind of like with dot loop, you would have to invite people into the, into the loop to be able to do something. Um, in this case, I don't have to necessarily invite anybody into the actual room itself. Now, if I wanted to, I can, and that would be more so useful if I'm working on a team where I need to share uh, access to certain rooms. And I'll show you that in a second as well. But um, let's just go through this real quick. So I'm adding the room participants. In this case, it's these three that need to sign something. And I'll just change the seller name. Again, I wanna make it John Smith so it's a little bit different than seeing my name. Um, so the seller here, I would have them sign first. I would then sign after them. And then what will happen next is the broker will go in and sign and they'll just be listed as number two. So you'll notice why I did that as well. Um, so where it says one and one, that means that both me and the seller will have access to sign it right away. So I don't have to wait for the seller to sign first. However, the only way that the listing broker will be able to sign is after we sign first. So that's why there's a number two here. So it creates almost like a, a tiered order, but this is like a grouped order. So one and one means that we're gonna sign first and then the broker will sign second. But again, you can also, you can just change that to one if you wanted. So like everybody would get it. But if you wanna keep it where like somebody would have to sign first and then you would go, you can change the order here as well, something like that. And I can also rearrange it this way too. Okay, so the next thing I would need to do, again, we'll hit next. And from here, again, this would already be filled out if I had it filled out, but then you'll notice that now the signature fields are populated again. So the owner has his side, I have my side, and then the broker has his side, his or her side. 
and we can go through the whole document. Everything's already labeled. It's good to go. So I don't even have to put any of these signature boxes, the signature boxes actually on here. I'm just basically telling it like who has to sign what. And once I hit send, that's going to send that document out and then that would be good to go. So one other thing as well, when I'm working within the room, and I'm working with the documents here. The one thing that's also very nice is that if we go back into command real quick, uh, what I could do is if I select here where it says add file, you can actually pull in the files from that room right now. So in this case, I might already had the forms filled, which I can then just say CIS and I'll just hit assign. And then that form you'll notice here will be added within the opportunity. And then I can just submit it to MC that way too. So because this is connected with the DocuSign room, the documents also sync. And I'll be able to basically pull in anything that I need directly into the opportunity. And then I can submit it to the office. Um, now, I mentioned here with people, if I needed to invite anybody into the room with me as like a collaborator or like a co-listing agent or a team, a team member, um, you can use this invite function. And that's how you would invite somebody into that room with you. So like if I was gonna use, um, just say like this as an example, you can say list side. And then for room role, I would do agent owner. And then basically they would have their permissions to go in and then they could view the room and edit documents. The other thing as well is if I right click on my name or actually there's like a little three dots here, you can do um, access. Um, actually, let me see here. I think there was, if I do share form access, you'll notice that for the access specifically, you can choose either just for this room or any room. So if like this person who's gonna be in every room with me, I can choose any room and they would have shared access to all those forms. So it's a little bit different than dot loop where you used to have to basically invite people into the loop with you. Um, in this case, I would have to go to add person. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, the only difference with doc, uh, DocuSign is that I don't necessarily have to do that for me to send somebody uh, documents. Uh, the other thing as well is that the person that you're sending it to, they don't need to create an account. So they can basically, they can basically just sign right away. Like I'll go into my email and I do have my email here that I can review. And this would be from the customer point of view, what it looks like. And they can go in Again, they'll sign here and then that's all set. And then they'll hit finish and then that's good to go. And they don't have to create a new account. So they'll hit no thanks. And then they are all set. So that's how it looks from a customer point of view. I'm just kind of move back into the room here. Um, does anybody have any questions in regards to uh, anything with dot loop that I could kind of like answer for you? in regards to making like this easier for you. Okay. Um, so I do wanna just show one other quick thing. And this is gonna be in regards to how, if I wanted to keep an archive of all my loops, how I can do that from uh, API Nation, which is essentially a connection between dot loop and Google Drive. So the way that I would do that is if I go into command and we go into the marketplace. The marketplace is going to have a product in here and the product itself is called API Nation. And what I can also do, I'm just going to search for it here. Go API Nation. You can also just do if you just typed in dot loop even. So you'll notice here that it has a few different syncs 
you have dot loop, you have dot loop and MailChimp sync. You do have a sync from dot loop to Dropbox. Um, the one that I was talking about in particular though is called dot loop to Google Drive backup. And it costs $10. I don't think you would need it from any more than a month. So basically it would be $10 just to sync everything over. Um, if you have a large amount of loops, it might take a little bit longer, but I think a month is probably sufficient. So if you're just paying for the $10, you should be able to get everything out of dot loop and into a Google drive. Um, basically the way that it works is after I buy this, it's going to ask me to sign into my dot loop account. And then it's going to ask me to connect my Google account. So whatever Google account I want to use to sync it with, basically all it's going to do is ask me to do that. And then it's going to kind of automate it for you. So you don't really have to worry about um, doing anything specifically other than logging into each account. Um, once it does that, what will happen is Google will, will create a folder in your Google drive. And that's where it's going to house all the loop data. So if you were one of those agents who wanted to get all your loops out of dot loop um, and then just close the account out, um, you can do that where you use API nation to get everything out. Um, I did mention, we're going to do this on uh, office level as well. So we were, we were going to sync everything out of there too. And then we're going to house it inside of a Google drive uh, folder, but this works pretty well. I've done it for agents. So if you wind up needing help getting this done, you can always just come to me. I've done it quite a few times at this point. Um, but again, I don't think you'd need any more than the monthly plan. And I would probably cancel it right after it's done because it's probably gonna do its thing and you'll get everything out within, um, with definitely within a month. Um, and that's basically all I really wanted to cover. Um, I just wanted to really show you how it's not very difficult getting things out of the loops and getting it into your DocuSign rooms. But I wanted to just see if anybody had any questions that uh, pertain to this specifically that I can kind of go over for you now, because we're kind of like getting towards like the wrap up. Any questions? All right. Um, so the video that I'm recording, I'm actually going to post it to YouTube later. So if, if you haven't already subscribed, our YouTube channel is Bergen County Partners, and I will have this video here probably later today. So if you're going to be looking for this later, just come back to the YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to it, you can just go ahead and subscribe. And um, again, any of the videos that I've done or we have done on a BCP level are posted in here. So you'll be able to find that in here and you can rewatch it. Again, you can always come to me with questions. So if you needed help with anything in regards to moving any of your loops um, into DocuSign or even moving them into command, um, definitely let me know and I can go over that with you. Um, but if there's no other questions, I'm gonna hop out of here and I will um, again, I'll have this posted to YouTube later, um, and you can feel free to come and reach out to me if you have any other questions. Take care, everybody.